hopefully at this point I've convinced you that you want to run MinIO for your development. And if that's the case, let me show you how easy it really is. Now, the examples on the next few pages, we are focused on that single node, single drive. We're not going to be getting into the higher level stuff because this is the developer course, not the administrator course. One of the easiest ways to run MinIO is via a container. All of the supporting software that you need, everything that you want is in the container. The only thing that you really need to, let's say, exfiltrate from the container is your data. And Docker allows you to do that very, very easily. Podman as well, if you're running on Linux. The command is the same. It's a Docker run. You need to expose two ports, both of which are very handily above port 1024. Port 9000 is the API port. That's what you're gonna be connecting to when you are running your application. Port 9090 is the console port. There is a console bundled into MinIO. We will be using it to set up some basic features. The next flag there is the data path. That's going to bind a local folder into the container. The tilde MinIO data is saying in my home directory, I'm going to have a directory called MinIO that has a subdirectory called data. I'm going to mount that as slash data in the container. The MinIO container image is on quay.io. And to start the MinIO server, it's server and then the volume where the data will be, which is slash data in this case and then the console address. And that's all you really need. This is sufficient to get your MinIO container up and running. If you don't wanna run it in the container, you can install a local version and run it on what we like to call bare metal. Again, the key here is to keep the data safe. If you don't have a container system or you don't wanna run it in a container, you can also run MinIO bare metal. You can install MinIO in a variety of different ways. You can use your package manager on Linux. You can use Homebrew on a Mac. There is a Windows installer as well. And once you have that up and running, it's a simple command as seen here to actually start up MinIO. The important feature again is the data path. In the first example, it's tilde MinIO. That's our data directory. It's going to be underneath our home directory. The second example is on Windows. It's going to be C colon backslash MinIO. But again, the keys here are calling the server process, handing it a data path, and then giving it that console address so that you can connect to the console. Now, you may be thinking to yourself, well, what about security? How am I supposed to log into that console? Hopefully, there's some security involved. Of course there is. MinIO is secured by default. There is a root user and a root password. And these are set using environment variables, either handed to the container or on the local system. The example you see here is more Linux focused. There are ways to set the same environment variables on Mac. You can set the same environment variable on Windows. It's just looking for an environment variable, minio underbar root underbar user. And then you hand it a username and a password. By default, both of these are minio admin. So if I don't set them, and I fire up my system, it's going to be expecting you to type in minio admin for both the root user and the root password. I should mention that this root user and root password can be used in your application to access your data, but I highly recommend that you do not do that. This user should really only be used for console access and nothing else. If you are setting these environment variables for Docker or Podman, it's just a couple of extra lines. You use a dash E to declare an environment variable that you want your container to use. And you say dash E minio root user equals root username. Or you say dash E minio root password equals root password. Don't use these defaults in production. I can't say that loud enough. Please do not use these defaults in production. We have an excellent support team here at minio. If you reach out to them and they say, hey, what's your root user and login and password, they'll never do that. But if you give them this root password and, and, and login information and you say it's MinIO admin, they're probably going to laugh at you. I'll be honest. So don't use these defaults in production. And do not use this root user for client access. Create a dedicated user for client access. I would highly recommend creating a user per application. So if I've got an application that's going to be accessing data in a certain bucket, I'm going to set up that bucket and then I'm going to set up a specific user for that bucket.